Welcome. I am here with the writer and the director of Taking the Fall. I have director Josh Marble here and Steve writer Stephen Hellman. Welcome, you guys. Thank you so much for your film. Um, so enjoyable. And Stephen, I, I want I saw something in the notes I wanted to start off with and ask. You are a first time filmmaker. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Um, you know, I was writing a lot of screenplays before. Um, this, but this was the first one that, um, you know, I actually was able to make, you know, I financed it myself as well. And, you know, I wrote this script sort of in the goal to, to film it and put it together and, you know, and Josh excelled and did an amazing job with it. So it was very exciting for this to, uh, you know, turn out the way it did. Now, putting something together like this is no easy feat, as you guys know, and a lot of our audience members who are filmmakers as well. Did it, are you hooked now? Or are you like, I could take a little time. No, I, I am hooked. Um, and my, my parents want to kill me. Uh, cause <laughs> they were like, aren't you happy with, you know, you did it. And like, and like yeah, I was like, well, I'll certainly, uh, you know, finance another one, you know, once we get this, uh, release this thing. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, once hooked. You, a lot of <laughs> so, they, they, were, they were hoping you would get it out of your system and the opposite yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. They were relieved when they saw the first cut, they're like, okay, good. They're like, Hopefully he doesn't want to do this again. I'm like, uh, on the contrary. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely hooked in. I hope it's the first of many, but certainly trying to, you know, enjoy this as the festival run is going. And obviously it's a little different this year with COVID, but still very exciting. Well, good. And I, I'm so glad to hear that you are still able to celebrate your film. That's what obviously we are all about here and trying to do this virtual. Um, I did want to, Josh, I wanted to ask you as a director, the character that, um, Roland Buck III played so magnificently. I got to give the two leads in this a, a shout out, Monroe Chambers and Roland Buck III. They just did such a phenomenal job, such talent, the chemistry between the two of them. Um, it, that was the first thing that jumped off the screen to me was their relationship and how they, were, they interacted with each other. Why you decided ultimately to go with Roland um, as the actor for for the lead in this? I could see this character going a couple many a couple different ways, and where you could have cast a totally different actor in it, but ultimately you decided on Roland, which was the best choice. And so I was curious to you, what made you say that's the guy? Um, well, first of all, Christina, thank you so much for having us. Uh, we're very honored to be here uh, to answer your question regarding casting. For me, it's always about um, you can take characters in so many different ways, and especially with a character who has to manage so many different people's emotions, it could be super high, super low, super jokester and prankster, super like down in the dumps. And there needed to be a naturalism. There needed to be a realism and in a way to carry the gravitas of the situation, but also not get sucked into it. And when we did an in-person casting, uh, Roland actually, he didn't let like, improv lines, but I think he added a couple little bit of lines. Uh, like he didn't improv completely, but he added a couple little lines that were like his personality just shown. And we saw that fluidity, that natural ease that he had with carrying this. And it was like, okay, he could really do this in a way that it's not over the top and you can really relate to it. So having someone who can be that anchor in the midst of everything was was crucial for the story and he, he just did it. it was he made it look easy which it wasn't it really wasn't oh no i i could absolutely see that and that performance and those nuances really shone through and mm -hmm. i thought it was a a very nice balance to um to monroe's character uh, yeah. as well and because he is a little bit he's a bit more he's a bit more big and boisterous and he's you know just got so much charisma so the two of them you see how in life that relationship would work 100 percent. Um, it's i i mean i have friendships that are the same way you have those friends that can balance you whether they need to bring you up or help you come down so so then Stephen, that brings me to my next question for you when you're writing and you're approaching characters in this way what is it um about you, like what what are your kind of favorite characters to write? Um, I my favorite characters to write are was was definitely Justin. I think you know it's great seeing his character so well received and Roland did you know a fantastic job. And when I saw his video audition, you know for originally his first one, I was like I was like that's it. We were all, we were watching it with one of my friends that I'm um, also kind of helped us with the casting process. We we're like I, I'm like we're pretty sure this is the guy. So characters like that that are very animated and sort of bring people in I mean this you know with this film in particular it's 
you know, it's a really, you know, another underlying tone of it is, you know, going for your dreams and not being repressed by, you know, this, this sort of culture we have. So someone like that, that's kind of saying a lot of the things that even I'll be animated and saying to, you know, someone maybe at a, you know, a party or something like that, you know, giving someone advice. So seeing that is, is great. And, you know, those kind of characters, those uplifting ones are great. Um, Avalon, um, who played out. Allison in the movie, uh, I love, you know, her character was so much fun to write, just, you know, out there and, you know, you know, kind of a, a drunk mess, but a, a good heart. So, you know, I really enjoyed writing, you know, those kind of characters and, you know, a character like Monroe, Tyler, it's, you know, that was a really good challenge because it's very, you know, he's on a yo-yo the entire time. So kind of toying with that emotion versus the, sort of a more static character like Justin, that's kind of, you know, holding the same, but, you know, but still, you know, dealing with a lot of different stuff. So they, it was, they were all fun to write and to see the cast come together is, was pretty cool just to see the characters. Like, I can't imagine the characters any other way than the actors that played them. So it was a big shout out to, you know, all of us putting it together, but, but a more bigger shout out to them, you know, for really bringing these characters to life. Yeah, yeah to Stephen's Jeff- credit, okay. we all know people that, we, we all know people that we can say, that's you, that's you, that's you. And they're so real. No one is, oh my gosh, that character would never happen. You're going, uh, that's you, that's you, that's you. So it was, it was cool to see that, that surrealism. Honestly. Yeah, for better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> and, and jumping off of that too, that was something I really enjoyed about Monroe's character is so, you know, his friends are kind of like, oh, well, you have failed this many times. And like you said, he's kind of, it's almost like he's all over the place, right? But for me, I felt he was the most with it. He was the most, he had the greater sense of reality out of anyone I mean other other than Rowan's character you know he's going through his own thing completely right now um, and just getting out of jail but for me I kind of was like no this guy's got it together more than anyone he knows what this world can throw at him and he knows how to overcome that and I really uh, appreciated his, his that character yeah I actually uh, uh Monroe's the one uh that just got out of prison Roland is the the friend oh. who had it Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. Excuse no, me. No, 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 no. Trust me. It took me a while to get it. But um, they, yeah, he was because I think everyone can relate to the fact that in life, you do not achieve any level of success without severe scrutiny and opposition and challenges. So while you know, everyone can say I have my own challenges. Do you persevere through it? And that was the main message for me that Roland's character had is that in spite of constant failures, that's the only way that you get to success. And so that was a good inspiring point for Monroe coming out of his situation into reestablishing himself in life, but also the checkpoint to everyone else is, hey, life's hard, deal with it and keep going if you really wanna do something. Like don't become a victim to your circumstances, understand that your circumstances give you an opportunity to challenge yourself for the better. So I would like to wrap up with one more theme, uh, more of a theme just to kind of talk about than a question. And it was this heavy theme of, so what do you do with your freedom? Um, As I saw these characters, you know, they were kind of all locked into a prison of their own one way or another that they put themselves in. I mean, you have this character who took the fall for his friends, you know, and and saying that like, oh, all the pot is mine, which, and I I feel that's really timely right now because right, there are people in jail for that reason and yet the laws are changing at the moment too. So I thought that was nice, but yeah, what, what do we do with our freedom or how are we not exercising what freedom we have? How are we creating these cages around ourselves too, especially young people who are fresh out of college, right? And that's supposed to be so exciting and you got your whole life ahead of you and everything. And then instead it's like, you're sitting there kind of spinning going, what, what do I do? Or at least that's what I was perceiving from the characters. Um, yeah. And I was curious where wanting to explore that came from, uh, from you, Josh. We'll start with you, Josh, and then Steven. I was gonna let Steven take this one first. No, <laughs> All right, Steven, take it yeah. away. You're the writer. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, this is, you know, this is really, you know, a personal thing for me. And it's, and it's about, you know, really my experience about how vastly my life has changed or just I turned 30 this year, but how vastly my life and my friends around me have changed from 22 out of college to when I was in my, you know, when I was 28 when I wrote it. And it seeing how people that had all these aspirations, you know, after college and, you know, I struggled to get a job after college. I wasn't doing, you know, what I wanted at, 
at all, really, and just fumbling, trying to get jobs. And the and so, but I was always like doing writing and and doing fun things and doing like what made me happy on the side, even though I was making you know dumb videos on YouTube that no one watched that are out there for people to find, and just trying to like constantly work on on my craft while trying to deal with all this stuff but when I was most happy was when I was just doing what I loved and kind of dealing with all the other things you know I, I grew up very you know in a normal normal upbringing not really any adversity so I'm very grateful for you know everything my upbringing and all that so I had nothing really to complain about when and living in Philadelphia and now living in LA and seeing uh, and this diversity seeing a lot of people around me struggling with just normal everyday things that we take for granted that's that was something that I really wanted to convey with this movie is that hey you know I, it's tough you know when i get it but it can be way worse so you know we got to kind of the towing the line of sucking it up and then like facing your problems as well is, is kind of what i is sort of my message to say like i have empathy in it but i but i do think we can you know use this adversity and, and build on it well i thought that message came in really clear yeah. um josh any anything you'd like to add to that or yeah no i I mean, I think I echo a lot of Stephen's sentiments because that's why we were able to work so well on the film together. Um, for me, it really was a message of, and it's become a message that is actually, I think, aged, I don't want to say well, because well is not a good word for it, but aged appropriately, uh, given the last year and a half that uh, we've had, or and just with between COVID and our, our, our society. And I think for me, the message has shifted a little bit to the fact that in spite of the challenges that we face, whatever they may be, we can always create opportunity for ourselves and opportunity to make changes for the better. And that for me is the main message that regardless of what we may be facing or what we may have faced, we always have a chance to turn it around, to aim for what we are passionate about, for what we love, for what we care about, and really make that be what guides us in what we do, how we are, and how we move forward as, as a person and as a society. And that's where I think we should go ahead and wrap this up because that is for me, I think the core at what uh, taking the fall is. So Josh and Steven, thank you so much again for being a part of the Chain Film Festival and thank you. your work. I look forward to seeing more of your work as you guys both continue to create and produce and write and direct. Um, just really wonderful job and bringing together a spectacular cast. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.